Hey there, Lotus fans. Brian Cook, and today we are playing a basic Simic colored Lotus Field combo deck. No red splash at all. Nothing crazy like mono blue. It's not, is it? We're just playing, you know, the stock, you know, classic Lotus combo deck. This is actually pretty close to the Pioneer Challenger deck that was released. You can actually update this deck list from that deck list for about $40. So if you're looking to, you know, make it super competitive, this is something you could do. And most of that cost is actually in Lear Disciple of the Drown, the featured card that we're playing today. I'm sorry, I know that Lear is a little bit pricey right now, and $15 per Lear is a little bit of a steep ask. I completely get that. That said, this is a card that people regularly ask me to test here on this channel, and that's what we're doing today. I did upload a video about two weeks ago that you can go check out where I played Mono Blue with Lear in it, and Lear somewhat impressed me in that list. So instead of running Emergent Ultimatum or Peer into the Abyss in the main deck today, we're trying out Lear. And Lear is pretty powerful because for seven mana with two mana floating, this will likely win the game. The downsides of Lear are that Rending Volley has become fairly popular because it kills Winota. And then on top of that, uh, well, uh, Lightning Axe, that's what it is, Lightning Axe, out of the Is It Phoenix decks are an instant speed deal 5, which means that they can kill Lear. So those are the two downsides of playing Lear. The bright side is the Emergent Ultimatum build, while it is 7 mana to also win the game, I completely get that. It requires you to run a bunch of really clunky, awkward cards in your deck, uh, like Omniscience and all this other stuff, where it becomes a kind of a pain. That and when you actually play the Emergent Ultimatum builds, it's not quite as simple as counting to seven, because you need to manage triple of a color and then double of a color twice. It rarely works out that it's a perfect seven mana win. And, you know, it does seem super simple, but once you start playing it, you sort of realize when you're tapping your lands for Lotus Field, it never is that easy. So here, Lear is actually quite powerful, and it could be even be six mana when you have a Brawl. So it allows you to win with fewer resources, which is something I'm just really, really interested in trying. So that's the big idea behind this deck list today, is that Lear is powerful if it manages to live. So let's see how often Lear lives in Pioneer. And we have these two win conditions in Fae of Wishes and Mastermind's Acquisition that go get our cyborg approach of the Second Sun. Uh, it could be two Fae of Wishes, if I'm being honest. You could, uh, you know, play both. Mastermind's Acquisition does flash back off Lear, which is kind of nice. So that way you don't need a Balagad back Fae of Wishes. Um, the reason why you would switch them is Necromancia effects, but those cards don't really see play right now. And Fae of Wishes is a nice blocker, so you don't really need to play the split here, but it is a slight advantage. Um, it's pretty marginal. It's not likely going to matter, but you never know. Uh, other than, like, this deck list really, at least the main deck is super, super stock. Like, this almost is the Pioneer Challenger deck pre-con. But instead of having uh, Yavamayakos, we have Botanical Sanctums and some check lands, but, like, this is pretty much it. Uh, it's a, like most of the upgrades in this deck really are the Leer. And then we'll move to the sideboard Stern Dismissal that isn't in the Pioneer Challenger deck, but this card's a metagame call right now because when you look at how opposing decks are trying to beat us, it's often Deafening Silence or Killing Us Quickly or Archon of Emeria. Stern Dismissal answers all of that just because Damping Sphere doesn't see a lot of play right now. So we're running four copies of Stern Dismissal to pick up those Deafening Silences or Archon of Emeria. Whatever you're trying to beat me with, Stern Dismissal covers the most popular choices in the metagame at least. And then we have our Mystical Disputes, Thought Distortion. I do think that Thought Distortion is a little bit better when you're playing Fave Wishes or Masterminds because you can put it to your hand. When you're playing the Wish builds, it requires 9 mana in one turn, which is just really, really ambitious. So here we get to play Thought Distortion. And then, you know, our classic Peer into the Abyss, Ugin. Ugin's also a, a popular choice right now, just because of those cards I just mentioned. Deafening Silence, are kind of Emeria. A lot of those hate permanents all lose to a, a, just a Ugin that you cast off your powerful lands. So that's why we're playing an effect like Ugin. I don't like Omniscience. I don't think it's actually necessary. And when you have Leer or Brawl in play, you can just generate a boatload of mana. So you never actually need that win more slot in your sideboard. And then we have three copies of Anger of the Gods for those red decks that just run a bunch of creatures with Eidolon of the Great Revel effects right now, where whenever you cast a spell, you take two damage. 
they play i can't think of the name of it but there's a two mana one now and then they play sideboard uh the one that becomes a three three i can't think of their names i'm sorry i don't play red cards i'm not a heathen i'm joking of course but hopefully you liked this deck talk. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I do try to answer all of those. And if you're looking for ways to support us, check this out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out the epicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number 1, we're on the draw and I think we're going to keep this. So it is a little bit of a bummer that we don't have an untapped land for this Grazer, that said not the end of the world. Elvish Mystic, so likely Winota. Ooh. All right, so we didn't hit the untapped green source. We will keep this Temple of Mystery, put that on top, and pass the turn. So next turn, we have an interesting choice on whether or not we play the Sylvan Scrying or Grazer out the uh, the Temple. And it looks like they're not on Winota. They're on Mono Green. So that is good information. I think... I'm somewhat tempted this turn to play the Grazer. I'm not positive, though. Uh, I just don't know. I think it's better to play the Scrying and just get ahead. You could also argue that you might want to strategic planning to find a single half of the combo. That way, the Sylvan Scrying finds the other half, but you're not guaranteed to hit. So I don't really like that plan because it doesn't actually advance you. And here we're seeing a Vivian that's going to pump up this Garrix uh, Harbinger. And we're going to take 6, dropping down to 14 life. And if we play the uh, the Grazer, they can fight it with the Vivian. So they will be able to clear a blocker next turn. So our time is running out. Okay, draw. Okay, that wasn't terrible. Uh, let's float green. Play the Lotus Field. And now we're going to play Grazer into Temple. And looking for that um, Thespian Stage. Hmm. So we already have one pour. We can cycle and cast the first one next turn. I don't hate it. Question is, is that better than something like a Hidden Strings? Tough call. I'm going to bottom it. I don't think I'm allowed to keep that. I've changed my mind. Okay, so we need to find Thespian Stage and win on our next turn. I would expect that our opponent uses... Ooh, they plussed. 
They could have fought with the Vivian right there and chose not to. Okay, let's block. And then they'll trample over for five, and we will go to nine life. Okay. Old growth troll went to their hand. Sure. And you got it. So they're just like green devotion. And we drew a poor anyway. Okay, so we're going to need to get kind of lucky to win here. Untap. Draw. So there's the stage. We don't have a hidden strings yet. So we're going to play out the stage and cast poor looking for hidden strings. We found hidden strings, so I think we probably have this now. All right, so blue, we will copy our lotus field. All right, and now we cast hidden strings, untapping our pair of lotus fields. Untap them both, and then no cipher. And now we will cast pour with the pages. All right, we're moving. And that was not a very good pour. Okay, so we have seven mana, which is enough to play the leer. And remember, we do have a hidden strings in the graveyard. So now we can play Leer. So this is essentially our seven mana win that I talked about in the intro. But we're going to untap our two copies here. Untap. Don't cipher. And now I get to flashback both of those pour over the pages. And they make mana. Because when you have two copies of Lotus Field in play, four makes one mana. So we can just discard an extra land here. And let's flashback the other copy of pour as well. Unfortunately, Vizier is a creature, so it does not gain flashback. Also, you you couldn't flashback a cycle anyway, so not the end of the world. So the only spell we can flashback at the moment is this Sylvan Scrying. Let's cycle this Vizier to make a mana. Okay. Draw. So we have a bunch of mana floating. I'm going to uh, go through time here and cast Dig. All right, so I'll have one blue floating. Looks like we can pick up a Brawl Chief of Compliance. That might be worth it. That wasn't a very good uh, dig, if I'm being completely honest. All right, so let's play the Brawl just because it saves us a little bit of mana and resources. And now we can strategic planning to fill up our graveyard for the next dig. So we have the Mastermind's Acquisition, but we don't have any mana. So that I guess that could go get a Hidden Strings. So we're going to take the Masterminds, actually. Let's tap this for black. Search our library for a card. And the nice thing about this tutor here is this Hidden Strings we get to use twice. Okay. So Masterminds came up pretty huge right there. Yeah, that was really nice, actually. Holy smokes. And now we can... Um, Masterminds for the approach, and then cast the approach, but we don't really have enough mana quite yet. So I'm actually just going to dig through time again. Okay, remove some of these cards from the game. One more card. We can remove that extra leer. Okay. The Vizier will make a mana. And then, once again, kind of a not a very good dig. Uh, Dig is a very powerful card. I'm not blaming Dig here. Sometimes, you know, the top of your deck just isn't what you want it to be. All right, we're going to untap and draw. Ooh, that was a good one. And I think this should make enough mana for us to easily win. So when you have Leer plus Brawl, this is plus four mana on the pour, which is just wild. All right, let's pour again. Okay, discard a land. And now we're just going to close this out. Let's use the Mastermind's Acquisition to go get a card from outside the game. We're going to go get Approach of the Second Sun. And let's float some white mana. And then cast our Approach. And now we can dig through time. Hey, blue, blue. So I guess we're a little bit short on mana, but we found the Hidden Strings anyway. So easy peasy lemon squeezy or something like that, right? And now we cast our hidden strings. Always had it. Boom. All right. So this will do. Approach of the second sun again. 
roughly infinite mana, never needed an omniscience, turn four win. Love it. Uh, that was really sweet. So let's try to do that again. Okay, so I think we have to ask ourselves, what is this matchup really about? And I think we're trying to slow down our opponent while not losing to hate pieces. So we made a decision when we registered our deck that we were willing to be slightly weaker to Damping Sphere rather than Deafening Silence, because Deafening Silence sees a lot more play. Well, the green deck cannot play Deafening Silence, so they're likely to have something like Damping Sphere if they're playing hate at all. So we can board in these stern dismissals, but there's a good chance that they only interact with the creatures in their deck because they're not likely to have enchantments. So they're mostly to slow our opponent down, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Um, and honestly, part of me wonders if I just resubmit the same main deck configuration and just try to be as optimal as possible, which is what our main deck does here. So I think I'm actually just going to click submit and try this again. Oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, our deck is now showing in card view rather than pile view for sideboarding. I've made that switch recently, and I just really, really like it. Obviously, it doesn't work if you're playing something like Vintage where your deck is really long, but for other formats, I've enjoyed it. And here we have the whole combo. We just need an untapped green source to accelerate into this grazer. I'm going to keep this and pray for the best. Because if we draw an untapped green source on turn one, this could end up being a turn three, which would just be wild. All right, Lair of the Hydra, Elvish Mystic, draw. Hey, hey, love it. All right, so we're going to play our Grazer, Thespian Stage. So this means that on turn two, we get to have Lotus Field. Turn three, copy. In order to win on turn three, we'd have to draw a Hidden Strings to start. So it's not super likely, but it's possible. What's the draw here? Leer. So that Hidden Strings line uh, looking a little bit better right now. So we're going to sacrifice these two lands past the turn. Okay. So now they have four green mana into a Steel Leaf Champion. You got it. Two cards left in hand for our opponent. What does this do? When it dies, so it's just a 4-4 trample. Uh, let's chump, and we'll take one, going to 19. Draw. Strategic planning. So, you might be thinking, like, I should just copy and pass the turn. Well, if you cycle the Vizier right now, one, you get the opportunity to potentially draw into... Hidden strings, which is kind of nice. But even if you don't, let's say you don't hear four out or you live in the real world like I do, you can still cast this strategic planning or this brawl. Uh, so both of those are really good options. So I'm going to copy this for sure. And then we have to decide between brawl and planning. Um, I think I'm going to play brawl. I guess if they play a Vivian next turn, I get punished because then brawl would die. Huh. Let's planning. Looking for hidden strings. We didn't find it, but we did find this port where the page is. So that means that next turn, we can start the turn off by playing Brawl into poor, untap, and generate two mana. All right. Four mana. There's our Vivian. So I made the correct choice to not play out the Brawl. All right. So we're going to take 12 damage here, falling down to seven. And then we're going to try to win the game. Okay, draw. Oh my, we're going to party town. Sign me right up. Four of the pages. All right, discard this land that we don't need. We can play out the Sanctum. Never hurt anyone. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Five mana floating is the perfect amount of mana to play Leer. And uh, we're just going to get to party here. All right, hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Okay, we have five mana. Um, let's make some black mana. Let's get the card from outside the game. All right, approach. So I have five mana, nine mana. So this would cost six. And then this would cost four. So it's one short. So I can't do it quite yet. 
Uh, so let's cast this pour the pages. Because that makes a few mana. Discard a land. Cycle this vizier. All right. Untap. Draw. And that's going to do it. So let's cast the approach. Okay. Now hidden strings. Untap. Now dig through time. And this goes the exact perfect number into our deck for the uh, approach of the second sun. So that's going to do it. We've defeated Mono Green Aggro in round number one. Uh, I clicked a little bit too quickly. Now I actually have to click on all the mana. There we go. Take that mono green. Turn four. Love it. Back to back turn four wins. Maybe this Leer card has some potential to it. Uh, the mono blue passed in flames. I guess it would. It's mono blue technically. Leer. Uh, not multicolored. But yeah, blue passed in flames. Pretty good here. Uh, that said, our opponent was playing a deck that had no removal. So I don't want to pretend that it's better than it actually is. Let's see how it does against the next deck. I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Match number two. We're on the play here. And I've opened up a hand with a Burial Grazer, but no green source, no land for this Sylvan Scrying. Unfortunately, we have to ship this. And this hand is very, very good. We're definitely going to keep this. Um... I think we can afford here to bottom a Sylvan Scrying. We already have Thespian Stage. So that's what I would recommend. Um, I think I want to lead on the Balagad. Because that guarantees that I end up having a land for this Grazer later. Okay. So, ooh, we drew another Scrying. So I could play the stage here into scrying and then the next yeah that works okay so we're going to go get our lotus field and then next turn i'm going to start off the turn by playing this temple of mystery scrying and then using grazer to cheat the lotus field into play okay so they're the green white aggro deck this is a tough matchup for us uh but we're just going to see how it goes the sylvan scrying can go get blast zone do not need another land. I can get out of here. All right, so now we play the Grazer and cheat in Lotus Field. Okay, pass the turn. Uh, I guess they get our Masterminds, but that doesn't even really matter that much here. Sure. All right, so this becomes a 2-2. I can block it with the Grazer. Doesn't really... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. This is the second turn that's triggered. Um... I'll take it. Draw another field. Okay, so green, let's copy the lotus field. And then I'm going to Sylvan Scrying and go get Blast Zone. Pass the turn. So getting Blast Zone actually does two things for us. Next turn, I'm going to most likely play the Blast Zone and cast the Mastermind's Acquisition for six, and probably get the Peer. I could also get Ugin. Um, but the Blast Zone gives us some protection if our opponent like plays a bunch of hateful things here. Thalia's Lieutenant and Giant Killer. Okay, so they're trying to get us dead. So now they can pump this Elite Spellbinder. Right, uh, I should probably block this. I'm going to take 5 going to 12. So they're representing lethal next turn. Draw. Okay. Um, something I could do is play Blast Zone. Level it up once. 
If one floating mana untap it activate. So then they would be getting in for seven next turn. But I feel like that doesn't actually do a whole lot. Like it guarantees that I live, but then I'm stuck in a very si similar situation on the following turn. Um, maybe that is just the correct play. So I would have one floating, use this land to untap and then activate. Yeah, that just seems like the best thing to do here. Okay, so we're putting a counter on Blast Zone. And now we will cycle the Vizier, untap the Blast Zone. This basically just gives me two draws to try to draw out of this. And that's not a bad one. All right, so we're going to pass. All right, Mutavault. Um, so they're trying to activate this so they can put a counter on it, I think. Or, yeah, with this, or that. Um, well, that's actually not going to work. Four cards. I'm just going to do this now, I think. All right, hit that F6 key. I need to draw, like, a hidden strings or something. That's nine damage. Uh, did that just kill me? 11, so I go to 1. Alright, so Ugin doesn't save me here uh, due to the Muta Vault. I just need to flat out win, and I do not have access to Peer into the Abyss anymore. That's a good start. Let's cast Pour of the Pages. Okay. Eh, not the best. Um, this... Bay doesn't quite do a whole lot yet. I think I'm supposed to Balagad back the poor. Okay, and let's just cast it. Poor again. So, theoretically the Grazer is a temporary blocker, but I don't think that's actually going to be relevant. Uh, let's discard a land because it's kind of free. And let's cycle the Vizier, see what we can draw into. Okay. Draw. Dig. Okay. Um, let's cast the Dig Through Time. I like removing lands and green cards first, just because they tend to be uh, not as useful. So we'll remove Grazer. And then Viziers can actually go too, because they can't flash back off Lear. Okay, pour the pages and dig. So this Leer could be a way for us to win this game, but there's risk involved. And that risk is that we would have to pour into a hidden strings. But if we did, I think we actually just win. Um, or I could take the safer play and take the dig. <sighs> I mean, we're pretty far into our deck without seeing a hidden strings. 39 cards. I'm definitely taking the poor, and I think I'm going to risk it and take the leer here. Okay. And I'm just going to play out this stage, I think. Let's tap that for a colorless. Blue. And let's play the poor. Oh. That was not ideal. Um... Okay, so blue, play the Brawl. This costs uh, five mana now, but if I had six, I could use that to go get the Hidden Strings, but I can't do that, unfortunately. So I'm going to Strategic Planning, and I missed. All right, Planning again. Oh, my. I'm actually going to Fizzle here. Oh, and I can't cast the Poor. I'm one mana short. All right, so we're actually pretty far into our deck without ever finding a hidden strings. Planning. Wow. All of the hidden strings on the bottom. 
For what it's worth, the dig also would have fizzled. Uh, we saw a similar number of cards. Damn. Yeah, they got us. Uh, that hurts. Okay. So we go to the next game now. And Stern Dismissal is a card we want because they're definitely going to have Deafening Silence. Um, so the question is, how do we board? Because everything in our deck is so crucial. And I think the answer is that you can shave definitely one copy of Brawl that can leave. You can probably get rid of one dig just because this is an aggressive matchup. And now we're at 62. I don't know if you need both Masterminds and the Fey. So I'm actually going to cut the Fey because I think Masterminds might secretly be better. Even though this is a blocker, I think this card's more powerful in our deck. And now we're at 61. Um... I mean, do we go down to one Leer? I don't hate it. You might be thinking, like, why don't you side in Anger? It's a, a fair ask. So we saw Lumark Aspirant. We saw Thalia's uh, Lieutenant. They play Selfless Spirit. This card isn't reliable in my experience, so that's why I like Stern Dismissal over Anger of the Gods. Did I say Reliant? Reliable. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to submit this. Okay, game number two. That was a close one. We'll try this out. So we have turn one Grazer into Temple and turn two Planning. So we don't have guaranteed turn two Lotus, but we do get a number of looks at it. All right, let's cheat this Temple into play, Scry. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Okay, so turn two planning. Dauntless bodyguard. Draw. Clear, okay. Planning? I think we just take the bark channel. That's the turn. Luminarc aspirant, so now they're going to force through the damage off of the bodyguard. And... I guess if I block and draw an untapped land, I can cast Dig. Okay, let's do it. Draw. Not an untapped land, but Lotus Field is pretty good. Let's cast this planning. We'll take the Hidden Strings. Lotus Field. Alright, so we need Thespian Stage at the moment. That hurts. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, so I can dig looking for um, one of the stern dismissals. Blue and dig through time. Remove the lands. Grazer. Planning. 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 Two mana floating. Okay, so Brawl is a natural counter to Thalia. I do like that. Um... No, uh, what is it called? Thespian Stage. There is a scrying in there. Hmm. I'm almost tempted to just take the pour instead. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Play the temple. Can't really afford that at the moment. So we're going to bottom that and play Brawl. So now it's like the Thalia isn't in play because the Brawl and the Thalia essentially cancel each other out. So we can tap five mana for the poor on our turn. Okay, so their creatures are getting larger and we have 11 coming in. So they're threatening lethal next turn. We're not going to block. Draw. Another copy of Brawl. Okay, so let's cast this poor. We found Thespian Stage. Okay. Um, or the land. So, I'm just trying to figure out what I can do here. So, copy the Lotus Field. And now we can Hidden Strings to tap the Thalia's Lieutenant. 
and untap my lotus field. Um, cancel. Uh, I'm just trying to think through this. So if I do both um, hidden strings on my lotus fields, I can leer them back hypothetically. The problem is that it's not cost reduced. Where if I tap this and then untap here and then next, uh, I guess I could play the leer, but then there's nothing to flash back. Tough call. Okay, so I think instead I'm just going to dig here. Tap for three blue, cast dig. A lot of pores in there. I think I have to leave the hidden strings. Mana is a choke point. Um, I'm going to remove the hidden strings. Screw it. All right. Ooh, that was bad. Uh, so we take the stern dismissal and the vizier. Okay. Uh, not looking good for the home team. Cycle the vizier. Untap. Draw. Yeah, we didn't win this. Bummer. Okay. Um, yeah, there's just nothing for me to do here. I can bounce the Thalia. Uh, excuse me. But it doesn't actually accomplish anything. Yep, they got me. Okay, so we lost to the Greenway Hapers deck. It happens. Um, not the end of the world. One in one. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot. Everyone's favorite storm wind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, match number three, we're on the draw. I'm going to keep the Turn 1 Grazer hand. It could be a little bit awkward because we don't have Lotus Field or access to Lotus Field. Uh, sort of just hoping for the best. We're on the draw. We get, you know, a few draw steps before we really get punished. We have the Temple to Scry. We'll see how it goes. Temple Garden. Okay. Draw. Vizier's not terrible. Uh, we'll play the Grazer into Temple. Okay. Uh, let's bottom that. Pass the turn. Okay, so this is Winota, or at least I believe it is. Draw another Sanctum. Um, let's cycle Vizier looking for Lotus Field. Okay. Draw. Could have been better. Um, so I'm going to play this into play tapped and then use grazer to cheat in sanctum and this seems a little bit crazy but it allows you to hard cast poor next turn what are you doing lead spellbinder sure okay draw temple no point in playing temple here because it doesn't advance our game plan let's pour Untap two lands. I think I'm just going to discard this Grazer. And then play Brawl. Okay. So we would need an untapped land next turn to play the poor, even with the Brawl. I'm going to block in case I draw a dig through time. 
Looks like they're stuck a little bit on mana. Let's scry. They can go on the bottom. Cycle is like it just doesn't do us any good to play it out. So let's at least try to hit here. Okay, planning. That technically gives us access to the Lotus Field, but we're putting two Thespian stages to the graveyard. Yikes. Okay. Lotus Field. That's the turn. There's land number three. Ooh, so now they get to exile my Brawl here. Kind of a bummer. Okay, I'm just going to chump again. Draw. So this costs seven. So I can play it off this. But then my Lotus Field comes into play late. What happens when this thing flips? This becomes a 3 3 first strike. Um, I think we just play it. Okay, pass the turn. So we have 7 damage coming in. We're going to follow the 13. Alright, so I am at 13. Paradise Druid, you got it. So that guarantees Winota next turn. Draw. Stage. Good deal. All right. So we're going to copy. And now we can hit in strings to untap. And we'll have uh, seven mana once we tap these. So that's enough to cast the poor. Oh, no. I clicked no. Oh, my. I can't believe I just did that. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. <laughs> uh, let's concede and draw three. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I was so busy narrating that I wasn't looking at what I was clicking on. Let's draw the three. All right, so we discard Lotus Field and cycle Vizier. Cycle Vizier. Into a pour. Oh, we would have won. We would have won. Oh. Oh, that's a feel bad. That is a feel bad. Oh. Damn. That hurts. That hurts my soul. Oh, bummer. All right. So I like the phase of blocker versus Winota. So I'm going to make that switch here. Uh, we still have two more cards to board out. I think you can shave a dig. Um, we need one more. Oh, yeah, the Leer. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Okay. New game. I think we keep this. All right. Sanctum Pass. Those are the sort of things that don't happen when you play on your own. But when you're trying to narrate and, you know, do everything for the camera, uh, sometimes you get bit. Uh, I'm going to play the temple here. I thought I was going to play the Fey, but then I drew temple. Do not need a dig. So that can go on the bottom. All right. Mana confluence into what? Inkeeper, you got it. Draw. Okay, so we can go get Lotus Field and hold up this turn dismissal. We just have to live long enough now. This the the lady Winota. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, got it. So they can exile poor here or the stern dismissal. I don't think that they go after Fey. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. They did go after Faye. That's kind of wild. Okay. Need to think about this. If I bounce this, that means they only have one creature coming in next turn off of Winota. I think that's just the play. Draw. Play the field. Copy field. OK. 
Okay, bounce these. Still, I'm beating myself up internally right now over that first game. Ah, uh, what a bummer. Another elite spell binder. Okay. So they're probably going to go after the poor. I mean, I don't think hidden strings make sense, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. And now we take three. Draw. Let's cast this poor over. I guess maybe I should hidden strings first. Like, it's unlikely, but hypothetically, let's say our opponent's a crazy person, and for some reason they're playing Mystical Dispute in their deck. Super unlikely, never going to happen. But it's literally free for me to start off on hidden strings here. Okay, discard the land. Let's cycle the Vizier. Okay, and now we draw. Another pour. I love it. Cast it. Discard this temple. And now we can cast the pour over the pages from exile for seven mana because of the elite spellbinder. Untap. Discard Lotus Field. Cycle Vizier. Untap. Draw. There Lear is. So let's a dig. Remove some of these uh non-flashback cards from the game. Hidden strings and another dig. Okay. Hidden strings. I was looking for a brawl there, but we didn't hit one. Not that it really matters, but a brawl would have been nice. So, we're going to cast Granted, yes, get the approach. They could be holding open a removal spell for the, they got boarding conceded, okay, uh, for the Leer, because they have one mana open, so they could have like a Rending Volley or something, it's worth pointing out. Um, I think we just run it back. Okay, game three. This hand's not bad. We could use an untapped green source on, for, on the first turn for this grazer, but, I mean, this is definitely a keep. Uh, we do need a second land, though. So we really want to hit that untapped green source. We have eight of them. Sacred Foundry usually doesn't cast a first turn. Ooh. That actually worked out very, very well for us. Um... Because now I can play this as a green source into the temple. And then we can use uh, Stern Dismissal. So this was uh, going to bite them a little bit. Oh my. Oh my. Hell to the yeah. We'll leave that on top. I've never had a turn two with this deck. But like, I don't think I'm supposed to try for one with our hand. But I really want to. I really, really want to draw, um, scrying. I just go get another Lotus field. <laughs> like that's just so wild. Okay. So they can play Winota here, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. Llanowar elves. Sure. They're passing. Turn dismissal your Alpine Moon. Look at that. We have Lotus Fields. That's crazy. Draw. I love the dig through time. Great pickup. Let's cycle this Vizier. I am so excited that this game played out like this. Like, best case scenario. Draw. Okay, cycle the Vizier. Okay, another stern dismissal. So I have two mana, eight mana, nine mana. That is not enough to put Ugin into play, and it's certainly not enough to peer. Um, so I could anger the gods and clear their creatures. I could also dig through time. I feel like the play here is to play the dig. 
Okay. Double pour is very good. We'll take those. All right, so let's cast pour. Untap. These botanical sanctums don't do a whole lot just because they come into play tapped on turn three, which is kind of wild. Uh, so let's cycle. Draw another vizier. I believe that's all four. There are no more viziers left in our deck. Draw. Blast zone. Let's cast this pour with the pages. Click. Okay, discard the sanctum again. And is that our last pour? It might be. One, two, three. So we have one more left after this. Okay, untap, discard the grazer, I suppose. All right, so we have 10 mana, 11 mana. Just trying to figure out what I can do. Um, right now I'm one mana short without casting the Hidden Strings of Ugin. So I think that this just became a pure win. Uh, and that's what we're looking at. So untap. Yes, yes, no. That's how you do it. If you're looking to not punt, that is what you do. All right, so now we play the granted. Go get pure into the abyss. Cast pure into the abyss. And draw a whole bunch of cards. Okay, play Brawl, floating two mana. And now we can play Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. All right, tap again. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes. And our opponent's conceded. We came back and got the match. That is awesome. We had a little bit of help from our opponent in game three. But I feel better about throwing away that first game. We're two and one with two rounds left to go. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below. And in there, you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm. But that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Match number four, we're on the draw. And here we have one of those risk reward hands where if we hit land two, this hand is amazing. Uh, but if we don't, we get punished. I'm going to take the chance when we're on the draw. So forgive me if we don't hit and I'll look like a real dummy. But I do think that this hand is really, really powerful. All right, we're facing red black. Okay. Um, I mean, I like not mulliganing against red black. Ding. Okay, so now we guarantee you have land number two. So what we'd like is another land, so that way I don't have to sacrifice Thespian Stage to the Lotus Field. They're gonna get in there for one. We'll go to nineteen. In the Harvester, sure. Draw. I mean. It's looking pretty good for us. Okay, so I think I'm going to play out the planning. You could play Baral, but it's just so likely to die. Hidden Strings versus the Leer. It's a tough call. I think it's just the Hidden Strings. So I am looking at a turn four win at the moment, uh, assuming we don't get disrupted, but that's pretty good. Deadly Dispute, sure. And they hit land three. So we're going to take four, falling down to 15. And a vampire, you got it. Draw. Valaget, I like that because it can later on get back the... Uh, the Leer to easily win the game. Okay, I just ho have to hope that they tap out for something else I don't care about. And then we just have a win next turn. Maybe this Leer card is better than I thought it was. It just seems like a really easy way to win the game. 
Also, let's not count our chickens too early. Like, I could still lose this game. Or I could die. Alright, so we took an attack here and they played an Urborg. What are they going to do post combat? Lurus to hand. Alright, so they do have. Oh, so they're tapping out. I think we've just got this. Draw. Razor doesn't matter. I guess it's a card we can discard to the poor of the pages. So it's not nothing. All right. So we will untap our Lotus Field. Draw. Oh my. We're going places. All right. Hidden strings, untap. We're going to click yes. Yes, and then no. Uh, crazy how that works. All right, so Baral, Chief of Compliance, you must comply. In strings. Yes, yes, no. And now we cast Pour. Untap. Discard Grazer. Pour. We have a lot of mana floating. I love that. Discard. Hidden Strings. So much mana. Planning. Uh, so now we're at a point where we would have come pretty close to fizzling, but instead we're going to return the blue past in flames to our hand. Leer. And now we get to pour the pages again. Okay. <laughs> yes, our opponent conceded. That was really, really sweet. That said, we had so much mana floating that anything that was an action spell would have won there. So if it was your Peer into the Abyss in the Rug List or your Emergent Ultimatum in the Ultimatum builds, anything would have won there based on us having roughly 1 million mana floating. So it's not like Leer was the perfect option, uh, but it was sweet. And now we get to go to game two. Um, I don't know what we sideboard, if at all. I mean, I guess you could bring in Angers over the uh, the Grazer. I don't think Grazer is like particularly amazing here. You could also like try one Ugin just to dunk on them over a Grazer. Let's just leave in one grazer. It's fine. It's fine. And now we are going into the second game. Sure. Keep. Blood Crypt. Thoughtseize. I have to imagine they're going to take a Sylvan Scrying here. They did Mulligan, so now they're at four cards. Draw. Another layer. So it's going to seem crazy. I am not going to play the battle get on turn one. I am trying to play around a second discard spell. So if they have a, another discard spell on Sylvan Scrying here, eventually I can battle get back a Sylvan Scrying. And it looks like that's actually what's going to happen here, unfortunately. Okay. No second land. All right, new game plan. I'm going to play this out, and then next turn I'm going to hardcast Vizier, looking for a turn where we can uh, hardcast Leer. Because then I could Leer back both of these. Soul Guide Lantern. No land. That's a good one. Let's go put our Lotus Field in onto the battlefield. So next turn I can hardcast Leer. I can cycle Vizier to untap, play my Sanctum, and be at 5 mana. Uh, hidden Strings? I mean, maybe they take the Vizier. I don't know if they, they'd see that line, but... Okay, they saw it. We'll take one. Draw. Sanctum. Alright, so let's Hidden Strings... Yes, yes, no. That was enough for our opponent. Okay, we're three and one. One round left to go. Let's get it.
If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth and final match, once again, is more on the draw. We have Turmon Grazer into stage, into turn two planning. Snap, keep. Sacred Foundry, okay. So this is the Red White Prowess deck. I don't know how the matchup is, if I'm being honest, but I can't imagine that it's very good for us. Okay. So a Spear, you got it. Okay, so they have the Reckless Rage. They're going to kill our Grazer while adding a counter under their creature. Pretty good for them. And we're going to take four, falling down to 16 already. Draw. Good hit. Um, don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I think it's play planning. Actually, hold on. Uh, does it make a difference? It does not. I was trying to think if it makes a difference if I copy the way that I copy next turn, if it's play Th Thespian Sage or tap, or if it's play land, play Lotus Field copy. It doesn't really matter, so I should just planning here. Brawl? Uh, not bad. Could be better, but not bad. A little bit afraid of death. Uh, we could die, which is something obviously I don't want to happen. Okay, three cards, a lot of creatures, one card in hand, three damage, so that's going to put me to 13. Draw. All right, so if I can live to untap, we probably win. Okay, we're just going to copy, pass, and hope. Do we get a turn four? Because if we do, it's a win. All right, at the moment, five damage coming in. Ooh, all right, two cards. Let's start off on the Blast Zone. Well, I guess Blast Zone kills their entire board. Um, let's play Brawl. And Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. All right, and now let's pour over the pages. If they have another one of this Reckless Rage, I want to hide the Leer as long as possible. All right, discard that. Cycle the Vizier. Okay. Draw. Another pour is very good. Cast it. A lot of mana. Not very good. Okay, so we're going to add green here. Let's thin a land out of our deck. Why not? Uh, we can get a temple. And then mystery. Let's get back a pour. Okay. Now we're at 11. And they just decided that was enough. All right. So we got game number one. The leer didn't matter, but it likely would have been cast at some point. Let's see what the pour would have found. All right. So that would have stunk. And then we would have played leer into a stock graveyard. So we won the first game versus Red White Prowess, which is pretty sweet. And I think this is a matchup where, once again, we want these stern dismissals. They're not likely going to have anything like Deafening Silence or whatever, because their deck also trying to play a lot of spells. That said, stern dismissal does bounce a creature that is threatening lethal. So that is why we want it. And I'm going to shave a Brawl here. Um, get rid of the Masterminds, shave a Leer, and the Dig. We want the Fae of Wishes just because it's a blocker. I know it's crazy, but blockers do matter. All right, game two, we're on the draw, and this seems like a keep to me. We have access to Lotus Field. We can slow them down a few different ways. I love it. All right, Needle Verge into Swiss Spear. We'll fall to 19. Okay, I'm going to play out the Balagad. Get that F6 key. Dreadhorde Arcanist. So we'll take one. 
draw and another scrying. Okay, so I'm going to play scrying here. They're, they are going to get a turn with Arcanist, unfortunately, but I can bounce it on the following turn. All right, so they're probably going to deal me a bunch of damage here. Feather, okay. I can bounce both of those, actually. Draw. Let's bounce Feather. I wonder if it's actually better for me to bounce the Arcanist here. Probably not. Let's just play the... It's fine. Next turn we can go get the uh, the stage. I'm probably not going to activate it though. Like realistically, I think I'm going to botanical sanctum double stern. All right, and there's feather again. I have three cards attacking for two. Okay, draw. Let's scrying. Go get the Thespian Stage. Let's bounce the Feather. And bounce Arcanist. Okay. Just trying to stay alive. Another Swift Spear. And Arcanist. Sure. So I'm going to take two here going to 12. Draw. Another copy of Lotus Field. All right, so I'm gonna start off on cycling these Viziers, hoping to hit something good. All right, draw. It's okay, but we need action. Let's cycle. Draw. And it is planning. Okay. Um, and a free. So let's copy our field. Now I can plan. I think our best hits pour over the pages. Dig through time. All right, I'll take dig. And now I can hit in strings to untap. So I can dig floating four, but four mana doesn't cast pour over the pages. Yes, yes, no. And now we can dig. Remove the land. Land. Viziers. Two more cards. Probably remove the Sylvan Scryings. I'm not going to use those. All right. So we have four open mana. So we hit double pour, which would have been nice, but I can't cast both. So I think we're supposed to take hidden strings pour. So there's a pour going onto the bottom of our deck, unfortunately. All right. Hidden strings. I think we want to, I mean, it's a unrealistic ask, but I think what we want to happen here is uh, for us to pour into the, the Singleton Leer that's in our deck. Uh, that said, they have four cards in hand. They could have the Reckless Rage in hand, which would be bad for us. There's the Leer. Okay. So, yeah. Let's hit in strings. And our opponent conceded. Yes. All right. We got the 4-1. I hope you enjoyed this video. This deck list was really sweet. And it's barely an upgrade over the Pioneer Challenger deck. You improved some lands. And then you added two $15 Mythic Rares from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. That's really it. I mean, some common sideboard upgrades, but you can upgrade the the Challenger deck for not a whole lot of money. So the Challenger decks, they range anywhere between 30 and 50, depending on your local game store. And an extra $40 or so gets you here. I hope you enjoyed this video. This deck list is really sweet. I would definitely play this again. Um, I am a really big fan of my rug list. I don't know which is better. People always ask me in the comments section. I don't know. I just like playing different combo decks. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care, keep storming, have a great day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. 
And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.